Okay, so this is our final Tamua practice paper from Jacqueline. So thank you so much to her for this entire series. I think it's nine of them in total, which is just absolute God's work. So thank you again to Jacqueline for doing all this. It's coordinate geometry is the last one that we've got to do. And, uh, and yeah, let's have a go then. So of course, for all of these questions, we're going to start drawing straight away. M is positive, so this sketch looks like this with a four as our positive inset. And then we've got a curve here, which intercepts at six, which is above four and is upside down quadratic. So it must look like this. And this is the point PQ apparently just there. Um, so what we'll do is this is the normal to the curve. So if we differentiate that from minus 2x and then put in the point P, we'll find that has gradient the curve, I mean, has gradient minus 2P. And that must be equal to the negative reciprocal of the line's gradient, which is M. So that's minus 1 over M. That's one equation in terms of P and M. How do we find another one? Well, what we can do is we can put this point PQ into both the line and the curve because they both exist at the point PQ. So we can put those both in. Now that means we have Qs to deal with as well, but that's actually fine because now this is three equations. Three equations, three unknowns should be more than solvable. So what we'll do um, is we'll put this expression for Q equal to this one for Q, and that'll give us something in M and P. So now we've got two equations in M and P, and, uh, and from here we can maybe rearrange this to get something in terms of M and throw it into here. The Ps will cancel, and we'll end up solving this for P here. So that's just rearrange that for M, put it in here, P's cancel, solve for P squared is going to be this. And now P can't be negative because if P were negative, then M would be, and M is a positive number. You can also argue P can't be negative here um, because the sketch doesn't make any sense to put P over here with a positive M gradient. You can't be normal to this curve over here. Um, so that would be the other justification, I guess. Short distance between this and this, we've seen lots of questions like this before. Again, a sketch of 2x minus 1 is very helpful. And then once you've done that, um, you can sketch x squared plus 5 is up there. The shortest distance between these two things is going to happen when you're on this curve here with gradient the same as the gradient of the line. So it's the point here such that the tangent of the curve is the same gradient as the line itself. So we differentiate the curve um, and we find when does that have gradient 2, um, which happens of course x equals 1. So the point on the curve is going to be when we substitute in 1, which will give us 1, 6. So that there is the point 1, 6. We just need to find this point here. There's a few ways of doing that, but what I did was I said this red line here is gradient y equals minus a half x plus c. Uh, minus a half, of course, because it's normal to both this line and this curve at that point, so minus a half is our new gradient. Um, if you put in the point 6, 1, because this red line goes through this point here at 1, 6, we can work out c, which ends up being that. And then we can set that equal to this line over here to find the insect between the red and the black to find this coordinate here. Uh, that will be found if we just do some maths. We get x is 3, and then we can put 3 into here, and we get y is 5. Um, and now we just need to find the distance between 1, 6, and 3, 5, which is 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 5 as our answer. Just doing a bit of Pythagoras, and uh, and we are all good to go. Excellent. Question 3, then. Um, again, we've got to draw this curve, then. It looks a bit like this. And we're normal at x equals 1. So x equals 1 um, is going to give us y equals 2. So it's 1, 2. So it's somewhere up here. So we're going to do a line like this that's normal to the curve there. Because the x-axis is a p and the y-axis is a q, find the length of pq. So we need to find something about this line. So let's again differentiate this curve to find the gradient of it. We know it goes through 1, 2, like I said, though, which is going to be helpful. Differentiate this thing here. Um, of course, write it like this first, then differentiate, then put in the point x equals 1 to find that the gradient is minus 2 of the curve, which means the gradient of the line must be positive a half. Again, just negative reciprocal things. Now we can put in 1, 2 to this line, and we can find that its um, y-intercept is 3 over 2, which is super helpful because that's just the coordinate of, uh, of q then, right? It cuts it at 3 over 2. And then if we shove in x is, sorry, if we shove in y is 0 to find when it hits the x-axis, we clearly get x is minus 3. And now again, we can do a bit of Pythagoras here, 3 squared plus 3 over 2 squared. Or you could argue that it's just a, uh, so you could do 3 squared plus 3 over 2 squared, which is what I've written here. But what I actually did was I actually saw this length is half of this length. That's 1.5 to 3. And we just did that triangle, right? We just did the 1, 2 triangle and saw that the hypotenuse is root 5. Um, so this is the same triangle. It's just a scaled up version, right? But this time it's being times by 3 over 2 to make the 1 into a 3 over 2 and the 2 into a 3. So it must be 3 over 2 root 5. And again, if you went through this maths, you'd get the same thing. But spotting these sort of similar Pythagorean triples is super helpful because it allows you to get straight to the reduced third rather than have to work it out yourself. Um, so it's quite a nice little thing to do. Obviously, just put these x, y coordinates into here. So the first one, this is the x, this is the y, so we put it in that order. Second one, this is the x, that's the y, put it in. 
This is just a simultaneous equation, right? So we're just going to solve it. Um, a few ways you could do it, I guess. Um, if you obviously just um, rearrange that for m, one way to do it is to say m equals log of this minus 2 all over 5, and then just put that m in there. And at this point, you can cancel out these 2s, actually, and times everything by 5, and you just end up with this which means either, because these two things are timesing to make zero, either this thing is zero or this thing is zero. I've written it the other way around, but that's fine. Here, three to the power of zero equals p, so p is one. And here, three to the power of two equals p, if you just add two to both sides, which means p is nine, and the difference between them is eight. And that'll be that done as well. Now we get to some circle questions, which is nice. Um, here we've got points, this and this is a diameter. So in the middle of them should be the center. The middle of two and six is four, and the middle of two and eight is six. No, it's not. It's 5. So 4, 5 is the center. It's going to be moved 3 units in the positive x direction. So the new center will be 7, 5. And then reflect in the x-axis. So reflecting the x-axis means that any point, if we just get out an axis real quick, I have to go all the way back here, any point reflecting the x-axis, so it goes from here maybe to down there. So the x-coordinate doesn't change, but the y-coordinate becomes negative. So back to our circle, um, this is not going to change, but this is going to become negative. So it's going to become 7 minus 5. And then enlarge by scale factor 2. Now, that means there's no change to the center because it's enlarged about the center. So the center stays where it is. Everything else gets bigger by 2. So we need to think about the radius here. So the radius is just the distance between this point and there. So that's 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is very nicely 5, I believe. No, it's not. That's 3 squared plus 4 squared. It's root 13. So the radius of the original circle is root 13. If it's scale factored by 2, that means the radius now is double that. So it's 2 root 13. So our final equation should be x minus this squared plus y plus that squared, because you change the signs, of course, equals 2 root 13 squared. So that's just r squared there. Of course, that makes 4 times 13 is 52. And so we end up with this answer of e here. Question 6. Do the usual thing to this. You complete the square on the x's and the y's separately to get this, which then simplifies to that. Happy to see the 49, because that, of course, means the radius is 7. What's the distance between the greatest and least possible values of OP, where O is the origin? So just draw it, right? We've got a center of 3 minus 4, so that's down there somewhere at 3 minus 4. Radius 7 means that it goes, I mean, this distance is 5, right? Because 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5. So radius 7 means it ends up over there somewhere. Um, so the circle looks like this. Um, and now the greatest distance from the origin and the least distance are going to be the distances that go through the center. So just draw a line that goes through the center and the origin. This will be the least far place from the origin. And that will be the most far place because you know the radius is already seven and because you know distance is five you can say that distance is two obviously and then because this distance is seven as well and that distance is five this distance is 12 and the difference between those two distances is 10 and we'll have our answer of 10. next one here going to break this shape into two pieces so i'm going to work out this area alone and then just double it to get to the other side and we can argue that this distance is root 12 which is the same as two root three because 12 is four times three root the four for two um, this distance here from C, because the center is 0, 4, that distance there is 4. And now we can do a bit of Pythagoras here if we want to. You can immediately go into trig, but Pythagoras makes it very clear what's going on. 4 squared minus this squared. Now this squared is 2 times 3, which is 12. I mean, we just saw it, right? Um, so 4 squared minus 12 is 4. Root 4 is 2. So this distance here is 2. And that's super nice because it gives me this angle without having to do any more recognition. Um, cos inverse of 2 over 4, that's cos inverse of a half, and I know that's 60. So this angle in here is 60, which means this angle up here is 30. Could have done sine inverse of a half to get this as 30 straight away. Um, but okay, so this angle is cos because I'm doing 2 over 4. You could also just use, have used tan straight away if you knew the 1 over root 3 business or whatever it is. And you could have got that as well that way. Um, so okay, where was I? So we've got that this angle is 30 in here. Um, and now what we can do is we can say that uh, um, if we want to work out this area down here, we can just do the area of this triangle take away the area of this sector. Um, so that area down there is going to be a half times 2 times 2 root 3, because that's this is a right angle, right? Because radius is meet tangents at 90. Um, so this is 90 degrees. So the area of the triangle is just a half times base times the perpendicular height, which is that. And the area of the sector is 30 over 360 times by um, the radius of the sector squared, which is 2 root 3 squared, times by pi, of course. Uh, that again makes 12. This is, I think, 1 12th, so this is just pi. Uh, and this is obviously those cancel to make 2 root 3. But I need two of those gray areas, right? So I just double this answer to get 4 root 3 minus 2 pi as my final thing. Question 8. Um, so P is 1 1, R is uh, 
seven three. So we can work out the center of this square is just halfway between those two points, and um, which is just going to be four because one plus seven divided by two is four, and then two. So that's four two. From here we can work out the radius of the bigger circle just by working out this distance. So that's going to be three squared difference between the x's plus one squared, um, which is root ten. Um, so of course if the radius of the circle is root ten, the area is pi times root ten squared, which is just ten pi. So that's the area of the big circle. Um, now I just need the area of the little circle because then I can just take away the two areas to find the annulus between them, which is what this is called. Uh, it's like the donut between them, the donut area between them. Um, so okay, how do I get the radius of the smaller circle? Well, Q is just at 3, 5. So the midpoint of Q and R will be this point here, which is just at 5, 4, it seems like. Um, again, just averaging the x's, averaging the y's, but that just gives me the radius of the smaller circle, right? 1 squared plus 2 squared is root 5. Um, and so the area of the small one is pi times root 5 squared, which is 5 pi, take away the areas and you end up with 5 pi, five pi as your area. Question 9 then, area between these two graphs. Now this is a, a quite an interesting question. Square both sides of this and you get this. Now that's obviously a circle, except it's not really a circle, although it doesn't end up mattering. Um, because when we sketch this here, y is defined to be positive because a root of anything is positive. So here, this sketch is only going to be allowed to be drawn for the positive y values. So it's just the top half of the circle that you would otherwise draw for this. Essentially, y equals minus root 2 minus x squared is the bottom half. Um, but we've just got the top half of it because we're just looking at the positive root. So it's just this. Now this line is a little bit more annoying to deal with, but at x equals zero, we can clearly see that y is just equal to this, just doing this divided by that. And we can rationalize that if we want to by times by root 2 plus 1 top and bottom root 2 minus 1 times root 2 plus 1 is just 1, so the denominator goes away. And we end up with quite a high y-intercept because this value here is clearly bigger than the root 2 that this one ends up being. So this is quite a lot higher than that. It should be higher even more, but I just put it there um, because it doesn't really matter. Um, when y is 0, it's pretty clear that x is just root 2, and that's really convenient because this is also root 2 here. So these two things intersect down there, and so then the line just looks like this. And we're looking for this area over here. So it actually doesn't matter whether you forget the circle doesn't exist for the whole thing. The area is still just here. Now, how are we going to find that? Well, a similar tactic to the question before is going to be employed here, where we work out this triangle and then take away the sector, or vice versa, sorry, the sector, take away the triangle to get this area. Um, but I can't do that without knowing the angle that goes from here to here to work out this angle here. So, okay, we need this point. So we need to work out where these two graphs intersect. So to do that, I just decided to rearrange that for, um, uh, I just decided to take this equation in y squared and throw in x squared. So from here, x is root 2 minus all of this stuff. So if I just square that all, then I'll end up with y squared equals 2 minus that x squared value. Now I can expand all this out. It's a bit of a mess, but it does expand out eventually. You can also use this minus to change some signs in the middle here, which is good. Uh, we also need to expand this thing out, I guess, as well. Um, and then more stuff cancels. These twos are already cancelled, but then more stuff cancels after you do that. Uh, and you eventually end up with something like this, I think. Where does this 3y squared come from? I think that's because I prematurely took away y squared on both sides. I think this should be a minus 2y squared. Uh, no, it shouldn't. It should be a minus, so 2 plus, sorry, it should be a 3. 2 plus 1 is 3, sorry. Um, and then you take away that to get minus 4 of them. Uh, and you divide both sides by y because you know y equals 0 is a solution to this. That's the y equals 0 solution, and we're looking for this one here. Um, so you divide everything by y, and that's where the minus 4 comes in. When you take away 4 from another y squared there, you get minus 4 of them. Then refactorize, you get this. And then what you can notice here is if you expand this out, two time, two root 2 times root 2 is just 4 because these make a 2 times by 2 is 4. These two things are the same, so therefore y is 1. Um, after you do a bit of rearranging. So it's a bit of a mess, but you get y is 1, which also means, based on the fact that we can use either one of these things at this point, um, but if y is 1, you can you can look for here and you can work out x is 1 pretty easily. Um, and that actually is super helpful because it means this angle is 45 degrees, which is an angle that I'd enjoy using. You can also just notice that 1, 1 solves that equation instantly, um, although that's not a very human-like way of doing that. Um, but anyway, um, so we have 1, 1 works. Um, so now we can just do the plan, right? We can say this is root 2, as we were saying earlier. So this area here is just the sector, which is 45 over 360 times pi times root 2 squared. Take away this triangle, which is a half times root 2 times root 2 times sine 45. This is 1 over root 2. 
um, and all of this cancels so that's just 1 over root 2 and this is just a 2 times this is 90 so that makes a quarter of pi and so we end up with this which is answer A. Also answer A you could have just underlined straight away because when you have these sorts of questions the answer is always something to do with pi. Take away something to do with the third, the third depending on what angle this is um, or take away some number it could just be it was never going to be any of these but anyway. Question 11 uh, sorry question 10 um, how do we make these perpendicular? Well we rearrange this to be y equals mx plus c which is just this and now this thing here has to be the negative reciprocal of this thing here or a slightly easier way I thought to do this question would be to take the other definition which is just times the gradients together to make minus one is a useful definition of perpendicular things so this times this must be minus one. Um, we can just times both sides by one plus root three and divide by two minus root three and then we can just um, rationalize. I've swapped these over because of this minus here um, so that's fine and then we can just rationalize and it ends up clearing up very quickly actually and you swap those both over because of the minus again and you end up with a here and it ends up being Quite a nice question to do. And the last one is definitely the hardest question on here, but um, there were some maths. It might have been a math question, it might have been a Tamura question that was basically just like this, which is the only reason that I knew how to do this, to be honest. But that's a lesson learned, right? Like the more questions you do in the past, the more likely you are to be able to solve future questions because some questions just look a lot like other questions. Anyway, so we let this largest value that they're claiming exists here, we just let that equal k. So our objective here is to solve for k. Except now that we've done that, this itself is just a line. It's just y equals minus a over b x plus k over b, right? It's just a line. Um, so we can sketch this and this, right? And this is just a circle, or it's really a disk, but we have to be somewhere on or within this disk. And this line here is a negative gradiented line because a and b are both positive. So this is a negative gradiented line with some intercept. And we want to make this line, we want to essentially, we want to make the intercept as high as possible because we want to maximize k, right? Which is what we've said here. So we want this intercept to be as big as possible. So we want to draw this line such that we can make its y-intercept as high as possible while still somewhere being within this disk or on this disk. And clearly the best thing to do is to make it a tangent, lift it so high that it just touches the circle, which we're allowed to do because uh, our x and y can equal 1. So it just touches the circle and moves on. But our k value is now maximized because we move this line as high as we can. So okay, and now we just need to solve for k given the situation. So obviously draw a radius in. Now that radius meets the tangent at 90. Now the gradient of this tangent here is minus a over b, which means the gradient of this radius must be b over a. Which means, of course, it's just created by doing a across b up. Except it might be some multiple of that. So I'm going to call that multiple m a m b. So, of course, this gradient now of this tangent is now just mb over ma, which is b over a, which makes it perpendicular to this, which is fantastic. But I also now know that ma squared plus mb squared equals 1 squared from Pythagoras. So I can rearrange this and solve for m if I just do some factorizing, do some dividing and square rooting. I'm not interested in m is negative here, um, clearly. So I'm just going to have this as my m. And that's super helpful here because now I can put that back in here and work out that this is the coordinate that I'm looking for. But now that I have the coordinate, I can just sub that coordinate into the red line to solve for k. So I'm just going to put this x into here and this y into there. Um, and then times everything by b, um, which gives me this. Add this to both sides. Same denominator here means this is just a squared plus b squared. And then, of course, this is a squared plus b squared to the power 1. This is a squared plus b squared to the power of a half. Cancel out those powers and you just end up with root a squared plus b squared is k. So that would be my k value and the answer is c. Thank you so much for watching and once again one final thank you to Jacqueline for writing such amazing papers. Uh, this is the last one. Um, so I will see you next time.